What's an experience you've deemed supernatural and cannot find a rational explanation for? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I had just moved into my first apartment. It was a very small studio in a not so great neighborhood. I was 21, I started noticing things going missing after a couple of weeks. A nice pair of underwear, a charm bracelet, things I thought maybe I left somewhere or lost or misplaced. Until I noticed a picture of me and my friend I had on my fridge was gone. I was perplexed, I turned my apartment upside down, no picture. Over the course of the year, little things would just disappear. I even went to the office and asked how many employees had access to my apartment. The office manager showed me the safe with the keys and showed me the log of who takes what key when. None of the dates added up to missing items. I was perplexed, I was about two weeks from moving out because my lease was up, and I was moving in with my boyfriend. A storm came in and damaged the apartment building, roof and HVAC. Maintenance let me know they'd be coming in to replace ductwork and replenish insulation. The guys come in, go in my bedroom closet, and lo and behold, there's a panel leading to this weird attic space that spans the entire half of the apartment, four homes. I had no idea it was there and the maintenance guys assure me that it's only accessible from my apartment. I decided to poke my head up and look about while they were up there. In the back corner above my bedroom, was what I can only describe as a shrine of my stuff. My underwear, picture, jewelry, all of my missing items, all together, placed in a triangle. I got so freaked out, I just left it all there, I moved into my boyfriend's house that night. I had him and his friends move my things for me, so I didn't have to go back. I told the apartment manager but she didn't seem to care at all. I get physically ill when I talk about it still because I know someone was watching me that whole time and I had no clue. So many many years ago, I was dating a girl, now that's supernatural in and of itself, but there's more. I cared for her deeply, first relationships will do that to you, but she was in a bad way. Too much partying, too many drugs, hanging with what is absolutely the wrong crowd, and some very illegal stuff after she broke up with me that I'm really not comfortable discussing. A couple of years go by, I think of her on occasion and hope she's doing better, but not terribly often. Then one night, I have the dream. In it, she's standing by my bed and reassuring me that everything is okay, she's better now, and there's no need to worry about her anymore. Odd dream, but I don't think much of it until two days later when I catch sight of a newspaper with a story about having found A who had gone missing. She owed it on heroin the night I had the dream. She wasn't a saint, but she'd also come up a bad way and, according to what mutual friends had relayed to me, I'd been one of the few people who really cared about her. I don't really have an explanation for what happened, but I like to think that she wanted to make sure I knew she was going to be alright. It's part of what leaves me firmly believing in some sort of afterlife. In the middle of the 90s, we visited some family at their farm in another country. The place was super rural, like they had some pipe coming out of the side of some mountain for fresh water, and one of this dumpster toilets that are actually just a hole in the ground, and if it's full, they throw earth on it and dig a new one. So, it was in the middle of summer and super frigging hot, even at night. I had awoken around 3 am because I needed to take a leak and went outside to go to that little creepy place in the ground. There was nearly no electric light outside, so no light pollution, just a brilliant starlit sky all over and around me. So I looked up and let it sink in and just enjoyed the moment, when suddenly a thick, fat, Gleaming light beam raced from left to right over the sky, stopped freaking in the middle, hung there for about one second and then raced off to the right. The whole thing lasted for less than two seconds, but it left me dumbfounded. I was never a big UFO believer, but man, what the hell was that? When I was a kid, I was putting on gel in front of the mirror. My bedroom door was locked. When I finished, I tried placing the lid back on the jar with my sticky gel hands. I dropped it and hit my foot and it slid under the bed. I was like dang, and dried my hands with a little towel. Then, as I was bending over to pick the lid from under the bed, it slid back out, on its own. I didn't panic or anything, but I did look under the bed and there was absolutely nothing where it could have bounced off of. Also, by the time I reached for it, it wouldn't make sense either way. 
It's not a scary or interesting story with poltergeist activity and humanoid characters, but I always think about it. What was it? What pushed the lid back out? I'll never have an answer. During the Bush War in Zimbabwe in the 70s, most civilian road travel was in convoys escorted by armed police or army. There was an armed vehicle in the front of the convoy, one at the back and one roving along the line of cars. My father was a cop driving the roving vehicle in a convoy going from Bulawayo to the South African border at Bitebridge. At some point, they were doing a vehicle count and noticed there was one vehicle missing. They rechecked against the list of registrations and sure enough one car wasn't there. The radioed back to Gowanda and a vehicle was dispatched to see if somehow one had broken down and nobody had noticed. Nothing. Shortly afterwards, they received a message that the vehicle had been found. It had pulled up to the police station in Messina which was about half an hour beyond the border in South Africa. The bewildered driver could not explain how he went from being in the middle of a line of cars to being several hundred miles away, on the other side of a border. The family's passports were checked and there were no immigration stamps or indication they had been through the border post. He swore this was true. I choose to believe him because, man, what a weird story. When I was little, I used to sit and draw at this small table we had in front of a window. From this window, we could see into our front yard and the street at the edge of it. One day, I'm doing my usual coloring while my dad is in the front yard talking to my uncles. When I peeked out, I saw a very young looking white man wearing a mechanics jumpsuit walk from behind my neighbor's house and into our yard. I remember I stopped coloring to watch him. He walked behind my uncle and disappeared behind our home. I was scared at that point, thinking he was a robber or something worse. Right when I was about to run for the front door, he reappeared. This time he walked from the other side of our home and up to the road. He looked both ways before continuing down the street. When my dad came back in, I asked him why didn't he stop that man from walking in our yard. He told me he didn't see any man, and he thought I imagined it. It made no sense. I remember seeing him vividly, I remember feeling genuine fear when he walked behind our home, but my dad and uncles didn't see him at all. I grew up in my grandparents' house, which was an extremely old house that used to operate as a store. It was later converted to a house and then my grandparents bought it. One day, my grandma and I are sitting in the kitchen. I'm reading a book and she was perusing a magazine, when we hear a sound loud and clear. The sound of cowboy boots walking around in the room above us very distinct footfalls and they couldn't be confused with another sound, if you know what cowboy boots on hardwood floors sound like. My grandma and I look up at one another and I remember whispering to her, I thought we were the only ones home. We were the only ones home at the time and I was never comfortable in that house by myself again, especially since my bedroom was upstairs next to the empty one with the footsteps. When I was in middle school, I lived on a hill that had a graveyard on it. I had a friend who pulled all-nighters with me, in summer it's light here pretty much all night, so it was never creepy. As we were heading down the hill, I don't know why, but I glanced back and saw a little girl in a white dress. This was around 2 or 3 am, I stopped and she walked into the woods, which the graveyard was like 100 yard away from. I asked my friend if he saw her and he did, we both thought it was weird, so we went up to see where she went but saw no sign of her. Three years later, I have a class in high school with a teacher who loved local ghost stories, so every Friday, he tells us one or two new ones. Then he talks about the girl at the hill cemetery and it snaps back to me, I got chills from the thought. My friends and I decide to visit the graveyard at night, because we were dumb and young, generally creepy so one tried to spook us by hiding. Five minutes later, he walks up looking pale asking to leave points to the woods saying a little girl just tried talking to him and I felt like we were being watched from the trees. Used to work hospice care. A woman who was dying of a brain tumor had two Siamese cats she adored. She had pictures on her wall and while lucid, would tell me about them often. The night she passed, I called hospice and waited in the living room. It was summer and the front screen door was open. I look over and see two identical Siamese cats sitting there. Thinking I'd lost my mind, I took a picture of them. They were real. Her cats had passed eight years before. 
I'm a rational and logical person and think there's a rational and logical explanation for most ghostly phenomenon. I cannot explain those cats. When I was about six to seven, I lived in a really old creepy house. My sister and I lived in the attic because that's just where the other bedrooms were. I woke up one night and sat up in bed to the sound of scratching. It almost sounded like a cat or dog scratching to come in. I was waking up still and trying to get adjusted to the darkness. When I could finally see a little, I saw something. It was crouched down outside my closet. It was skinny, gray, naked and humanoid. It seemed to be slowly dragging its fingernails or claws over something on the ground that I couldn't see. Being as young as I was, I reached over to grab my plastic blue lightsaber. At the time, I was super into reading and had a huge pile of books on the coffee table beside my bed. As I reached for my makeshift weapon, I was too scared to take my eyes off the thing. In the split second that I knocked my books over, the thing snapped its head toward me. It hadn't seen me before and such a motion made it seem like it just snapped its back. Its eyes were yellow and glowing. Something about those yellow eyes froze me to the spot. They seemed so feral, there was no hard light that was in the room that could make eyes glow like that. After what felt like 5 minutes but probably wasn't more than a couple seconds, the thing ran into my closet. My closet didn't have a door on it, I can't remember why my father had taken it off. But after a bit of keeping my eyes trained on the closet, I finally got up holding my lightsaber. I crept over to the light switch and flipped it on. Nothing, it was just gone and there was nowhere else it could have gone. Rationally, I would have chalked it up to imagination. However, I looked at the floor where the thing had been scraping at. There I found a mouse, cut up to hell and back. I have no clue what it was, but my mind can only guess it was supernatural. I don't really believe in ghosts, but a whole bunch of weird, unexplained stuff went down in one house I lived in growing up, nothing like it happened before or since that place. One time, my sister and I were sitting in the living room, and an antique clock from the 1800s sitting on the mantel chimed a few times for one of the hours. That clock hadn't been wound or had the hands move at all in several decades, nor had it been moved or settled in years. There's no way a gear just happened to turn over after all that time. We turned white looking at each other. Another time, my whole family was sitting in the family room watching TV, and there were three loud distinct knocks on an interior door in the hallway. My mom said, I guess that's Ralph visiting us, with a straight face. Ralph was the former owner who died within a few weeks of moving out of the place. No idea what makes three loud knocks on a door. Not a fun experience. I used to hear what sounded exactly like footsteps moving around the house at night. This was not regular creaking or settling, it was clearly moving down hallways. Usually, I would get a little bit scared. One night, I was actually counting loud steps moving towards my room and it clearly sounded like someone stopped in the hallway outside my room. This time I wasn't scared, I was annoyed. I got up with the intention of complaining to a family member that it was really annoying that they were walking around the house in the dark at night, and I opened the door, and there was no one there. Freaked me out. I'm as skeptical about supernatural stuff as anyone, but these things happened, with no reasonable explanation. I'm glad nothing like this has ever happened anywhere else I've loved since then. My grandma who absolutely hated me for being trans passed away a few years ago and was cremated her ashes were given to us via her will, because we were the only part of her family even though everyone hated that bitter woman who visited her. About a year ago, I woke up to loud like banging and glass shattering in the apartment. I got my knife and walked out thinking home intruder, but no one was in the house. My mom walked out of her room and saw what I saw. Every picture of me was smashed or thrown to the ground. A month ago, I was going to the bathroom and there was a figure there about the size of my grandmother and it rushed me I closed my eyes and it was gone. So now, I just don't sleep and I can hear footsteps in our gallway. Walk up to my door and stop, then walk back Tati living room, and I'm about to clean this house and throw out the wretch's ashes. I was staying in this older run-down hotel in Osaka, Japan. My laundry was taking forever because the dryer sucked and I was having to go from my room to the laundry area every half hour to check whether my stuff was dry, and put in more coins well past my preferred bedtime. To get there, 
I went down a dimly lit triangle shaped staircase that spiraled down several flights to the basement level where the machines were. The stairwell was probably designed to be earthquake and fireproof, so there were heavy metal doors from the hallway into the stairwell and the steps as well were metal. Closing the door and taking each step made a fairly loud racket that echoed through the stairwell. Around midnight, I went to check whether my stuff was dry, and on my way back up, I saw a guy in the staircase just standing still facing one of the doorways into the guest rooms. I wasn't sure what he was doing, so I continued up the stairs keeping my eye on him because something just felt off. He stood motionless as I passed a few feet of him going up the stairs. Went around a blind spot, and when the place he was standing came back into view, he was gone. Looked up and down and he was nowhere in the stairwell. He was out of my view for only a few seconds. I later checked the door he was standing at and there was no way I wouldn't have heard his footsteps or the door opening, should have heard shuffling, rattling of the door handle or a squeak of the door shutting at least. I have no idea who he was or what he was doing there. He seemed real because I saw him for more than several seconds from multiple angles. I wanted to ask the hotel receptionist about it, but I didn't want to sound like a weirdo though. When all my relatives came to town when my grandmother passed. It was the first time we had all been together. We were gathered on the front porch, maybe about to take a picture, I don't really remember since I was eight at the time, but out of nowhere, a pure white dove landed in the middle of the lawn and just watched us. Without missing a beat, mom said, that's mama right there. She and my grandmother were extremely close, and she took her death pretty hard, so she said she could just feel it. It stayed perfectly still looking at each of us, while I slowly moved towards it. As an eight-year-old living in South Central Los Angeles, it was extremely odd to see a white dove at all, let alone by itself and in doing nothing but looking at us, so we were all stunned into silence. Eventually, because I was a dumbass kid, I moved too close because I wanted to touch it, and it flew away. Never saw another one in the area ever again. I was telling my girlfriend how I believed her house was haunted. So we walked into the kitchen of her house, as I am telling her why I believe such a thing, to make a late night snack. I wanted to make sure our outdoor cats had food for the night, so I proceeded to grab them a cupful of food from the bag. As I open the door and step outside, while still telling her my reasoning for believing it's haunted, her mother's oxygen tank that was full and sitting two feet away from the door, falls right into my kneecap, causing me to fall down the step and seriously bruising my knee. The oxygen was inside the house and there was no wind. Even with any wind, this was a full oxygen tank that was very heavy, which couldn't have been brought down by any mild wind regardless. My knee was really bummy for a while and it scared the hell out of me. Especially since I was telling my girlfriend about the house being haunted just as this happened. This was back when my girlfriend lived about half an hour away. She had experienced this before, but I'll speak from my experience. I came round, I lived about half an hour away, I let myself in and shouted hello through the front door, I clearly heard her voice reply I'm up here. The bathroom was at the top of the stairs and it sounded like it came from the bathroom, and I can hear the tap running. As I walk up the stairs as the bathroom comes into view, I can see the light is off. At this point, I notice the tap isn't running. I didn't hear it turn off. I just now noticed that it is not running nor is she in the bathroom. I went to her room where she immediately says oh, you're here. She said she hadn't heard me come in and that she definitely hadn't shouted down the stairs. Maybe months later, she called me to ask if I'd set off as I was due to be at hers that evening. I told her I hadn't set off yet and asked what was wrong. She sounded a bit panicked, but said she was locked in the bathroom, so I set off right away. Note, every now and then, the outside handle to the bathroom would shake loose and fall off and you were trapped inside until someone opened it from the outside. I eventually arrive at hers and let her out of the bathroom for her to tell me before she called, she heard someone come in through the front door and clearly heard my voice call her name and say I'm here then silence. She was calling back to me saying I'm locked in here, can you let me out? And then just silence. After a while, she realized I wasn't there, in fact no one was there. I always wanted to put it down to mishearing, but I clearly heard her voice shout to me. Really unsettling thinking it could be something imitating us to each other. The house I grew up in was insanely haunted. Footsteps, sometimes they'd be walking, sometimes they'd be running, voices and low grumblings. 
Cabinet doors would open or shut right in front of your eyes. Things would slide off the table, big things, right in front of your eyes, doorknobs would rattle. You'd feel someone sit down on the bed next to you. Taps on your shoulder or on your feet when you'd be in bed. Figures would pass the doorways. The top steps on the stairs would creak same as if someone was walking on them. Tension in the air, strange noises, rustling under the bed. One other random thing was my alarm clock radio would always turn to the Christian station on its own when I always had it set to something else. Later on, I heard Howard Stern complain the same thing was happening to him, always thought that was random as hell. When we finally moved, our neighbor ended up buying our house to renovate and sell. I was maybe 14 at that point and I warned him about the ghosts. He brushed it off and told me when in the attic and the bangs I was hearing were from one of the air ducts being unaligned, something like that. Strange, because we never heard any banging. Anyway, my best friend still lived in that neighborhood and when I was visiting her, we ran into my old neighbor. He couldn't wait to talk to me. He told me I was right, and there were strange things happening all the time. And the icing on the cake was when he ripped up the carpets and tile he found a blood stain in the laundry room. He did some digging and discovered the owner prior to a shot and killed himself. Our realtor, who also happened to be my fifth grade teacher, never told us. I drive by that house now 15 plus years later and I still get the creeps.